The lands between are ruined, mired in torment and despair. Is there really anything here worth fighting for? Is there any one worth saving? Hello? Is somebody there? My name is Arena. I've escaped from Castle Morn, to the south. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander, the servants there have rebelled. Filled with hatred for every one of us. They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. I... I fear for father's life, and my soul wishes that he escape. The slaves of Castle Morn are misbegotten. Their very existence is considered to be a punishment. But their only crime was being born outside of grace. So it's no wonder that hatred has fermented in their hearts, inspiring them to finally break free of their masters. The next step in a cycle of revenge that began at Castle Morn long ago. I see. From Arena. Thank you. I mean, you're dead, but I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain to ensure the treasured Sword of Morn does not fall into the wrong hands. Ages ago, a lone champion fought at Castle Morn. His entire clan had been vanquished, but he grafted their swords onto his own and continued to fight. So determined was he to claim his revenge. And so, this became the legendary sword of Castle Morn. It was claimed by the banished knights of Godric, stolen by a misbegotten, and then passed down to you. And with it, the cycle of revenge continues. An eye for an eye. I'm in your debt for keeping the sword from those fallen creatures. I'm no longer bound by duty. Once I've rescued Arena, I will spend my remaining days with her. Arena, how could this be? My daughter deserved better. The fault lies with me. I chose duty over my daughter's safety. And that is how fate has answered. I'll find them. The foul wretch is responsible for this. I'll hunt them down and exterminate every last one of them. Rest assured, Arena, it will be done. You're a tarnished. I can see it, and I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you when you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, Things are not so different for us now. I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the tarnished, and mine. See that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy, no regard, nothing. But if anyone dares harm us, 
Show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are. Deeply unforgiving. Deep within the eyes of the oldest merchants, a secret is hidden. Deeply unforgiving, indeed. But I've done all I can here. I'm thinking of moving elsewhere for a time. So far, we've spoken of misbegotten, banished knights, tarnished, and merchants. All were spurned by grace, in one way or another. You can't go too far without wondering if the Golden Order is to blame for the oceans of anger and despair. When we last met Edgar, he swore revenge upon the misbegotten. But now, all must die, misbegotten or not. And if you defeat Edgar, you will receive a Shabriri grape. It's our proof that his need for revenge no longer divides or distinguishes. Love, revenge, melt it all away in the yellow chaos flame. But there are those who fight against the tarnished who stalk their own. Yura, the hunter of bloody fingers, will often be at your side. Yura comes from the land of reeds, a place that has long been locked in a miserable civil war, and it's said that the entire nation has succumbed to a blood-soaked madness. It's not too surprising, then, that Yura fights against any blood craze tarnished, whether they serve the Lord of Blood or otherwise. But Yura's true mark is a drake knight named Eleonora, located at the Second Church of America, where she kills Yura in cold blood. Once, Eleonora had a legacy as a proud knight, but because of her dragon communion, it seems her humanity has slipped away. So, you put that legacy to rest. By now, it should be clear that madness takes many forms. Hello? Is someone there? My name is Hayata, and I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so bold as to ask, would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? She looks like Arena, but Arena is dead. Somehow, this Hayata has taken over that body. But for what purpose? She barely even knows herself. I can feel a distant light in the back of my eyes. It will lead me to my true duty as a finger maiden. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes. But you seem somehow firmer. Now I can feel the distant light once more. That aside, I wonder what Shabriri grapes really are. Delectably tender and sweet, yet searing. What a sight they must be to behold. Of course, the Shabriri grapes are eyes. Yellow, shriveled, and oozing. That's not possible. Not all of those people. Their own... So those noises I heard were... <laughs> Shabriri, the most reviled man in all of history. It all began long ago with the crime of slander. Shabriri came up with a lie, and it was so damaging, so heinous, that his eyes were gouged out as a punishment when that lie was proven to be false. We can't be sure of what was said, but what if Shabriri slandered the nomadic merchants? What if, with a crooked smile, he accused them of the very crime he himself was guilty of, saying that they had fraternized with the three fingers and were not to be trusted? 
This would explain why the nomadic merchants came to be so hated. It is said, after all, that the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shabriri. And after his eyes were gouged out, the blight of the Flame of Frenzy came to dwell in his empty sockets. Yellow eyes became known as Shabriri grapes, and Frenzy started to infect the despairing world. A madness that belongs to those who have lost everything. Ah, by the way, while well, even we had a place to call home once, the Great Caravan, they called it. But it's been lost to us for ages. I've been searching for it as long as I can remember. And with a name like that, you'd hope they kept some fine goods there, eh? I've always preferred my own company to that of other people's. And I don't have any burning questions I wish to ask my ancestors. But there's something I need to know. My roots. I want to know who I am. Where I came from. Where I'm headed. I hope you can join me at the Great Caravan, in fact. Who knows what wonders there might be to trade. If Shabriri did indeed slander the merchants, then he knew exactly what their despair might bring. Ah, uh, is that you over there? I've gleaned something very important indeed, thanks to you. The reason why it was eyes I had to eat. The distant light is far and frail. So faint it can't be seen by the naked eye. But with everyone's eyes together, it appears. Finally, it all makes sense. I'm certain now. I will be a finger maiden. Could you donate a fingerprint grape to me? They're special grapes which only grow on those who've been clasped by the burnt fingers. We only know of one other who was clasped in such a manner. His name was Vike. The Dragon Spear. After the war with the ancient dragons, there came the rise of the dragon cultists, who earned the dragon's affection. One of the most beloved was Vike the Dragon Spear, a tarnished descended from Godfrey, who eventually returned from across the sea to join the Round Table Hold in hopes of becoming Elden Lord. To this end, Vike was assigned a finger maiden and acquired the power of two great runes. But when he stood before the thorns of the Erd Tree, he realized the truth, that a maiden's true purpose is to burn the thorns for the one who would become Elden Lord. And whether it was born of love or duty, Vike refused to burn his maiden, for the whisperings of Shabriri had told him of another flame. A flame of frenzy hidden deep below the capital that could burn the thorns away. But when Vike returned, maiden was dead. Did she commit suicide after betraying her purpose? Or was Vike captured and punished for his treason? Whatever the case, now Vike's vengeful spirit defends the dead maiden at the Church of Inhibition, while the real Vike kneels imprisoned in an ever-jail deep within the Forbidden Lands, clad in armor clasped by three burnt fingers. This is all that remains of the contender that was supposed to become Elden Lord.
Finally, we meet the tarnished who would be Lord. Oh my, why the long face? I fear that you were previously acquainted with this vessel. Well, that is most unfortunate, for he is dead. As for his flesh, he gave it to me. Shabriri. I hope you can make your peace with that. You are about to sacrifice something precious, the life of a fair maiden, that you would toss into the fiery forge, only so that you may be lord. What a horrible thing to ponder. Your ascendancy requires her sacrifice, whether she wishes it or not. But how would the Lord crown so be looked upon? Chosen tarnished and would-be Lord dare to tread the path of true rigor. Spare the poor girl and singe your own flesh in her stead. If you are prepared to show resolve and attain lordship through righteous hardship, then heed the words of I, Shabriri. Chosen, tarnished, and would-be lord, descend into the depths far below the Erdtree capital. Seek audience with the three fingers and the flame of frenzy. If you inherit the flame of frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling. Burn the earth tree to the ground and incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. Ah, oh, may chaos take the world. May chaos take the world. Shabriri is chaos. I cannot die. <sighs> May chaos the world. If you intend to claim the frenzied flame, I ask that you cease. It is not to be meddled with. It is chaos, devouring life and thought unending. However ruined this world has become, however mired in torment and despair, life endures. Births continue. There is beauty in that, is there not? If you would become Lord, do not deny this notion. Please, leave the frenzied flame alone. And maybe you would have left it alone, were it not for the horrors that you found down there. Did you see? What they did to my ancestors. The whole clan buried alive. Sick. Maddened. Husks of themselves. If you heard their moans, they're hardly human anymore. They think we worship the three fingers that we called the maddening sickness down upon them. Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall get from us! The world of Grace and his people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims, Never forgive any of you. We won't be training any longer. Wait. 
was that? That burn. Your eyes. You've inherited the flame of frenzy. Unknown warrior. Divest yourself of everything. Our three fingers throw wide the door. Frenzied flame to melt away the curses, suffering, and despair. And the order entire. Greater will made a mistake. Torment, despair, affliction, every sin, every curse, every one born of the mistake. And so, what was borrowed must be returned, melted all away with the yellow chaos flame, until all is one again. Those who gave me grapes howled without words, saying they wished they were never born. Become their lord, take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse, and melt it all away. As the lord of chaos, no more fractures, no more birth. And so it is, that an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. You have inherited the frenzied flame. A pity. Our accord ends here.
Lord of Frenzied Flame. I will seek you as far as you may travel. To deliver you what is yours. Destined Death. Thank you for watching. If you want to get early access to more videos like this, then you can consider signing up to my Patreon. The money from there helped me to invest really heavily into this episode. For example, the music that you heard during the Kale scene was completely custom made just for this video. It was commissioned from the hugely talented Alex Rowe. I wanted to take the merchant violin that you hear in game and then evolve it into its own soundtrack. And Alex did this great job at creating a song that really elevated the mood of this Prepare to Cry episode. And of course, this episode wouldn't be half as good also without the efforts of Miss Pap One, who came up with the visuals and the editing ideas for this episode, and he just inspired so much of the story here, so be sure to give them props in the comments as well. Special thanks also to Sekiro Dubi for showing off Kale's cut quest line, which served as inspiration for this episode as well. And thanks in general to all of the modders and the hackers who give us the tools that we need to properly tell the stories of Elden Ring. And again, Thank you for watching. I'll try to do a shorter Prepare to Cry episode next time, I think. And I'll see you then.